Welcome, we've made it to another episode of Inspire Intimacy. I am your host, international relationship coach, Alicia Fisher, and today I have got mental health advocate, Haya, with me. Welcome to Inspire Intimacy. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thank you so much for for finding time to, to do this and to talk about a subject that I think impacts everyone in some capacity, but obviously some people more than others. So today we're going to be discussing body issues and eating disorders. And then we're going to go into how that impacts your intimate relationships. First of all, I would love to say that like eating disorders are taken um, not seriously enough because they are actually the highest fatality. We have the highest fatality rate among any other mental illness or disorder. Um, and they affect people who are in their teens right up till their 40s, 50s, and they can cause a lot of complications medically. So they're quite dangerous. And in Canada, there are a range of eating disorders. Um, NEDIC, which is the National Eating Disorder Institute, and NEDIC, which is the National Eating Disorder Institute and Center, has a lot of stats on um, eating disorders. And currently, the ones that are more prevalent are anorexia nervosa, um, bulimia, and binge eating disorders, although there are some more sophisticated ones too, but they're a little bit less common in society. Mm -hmm. There are bodies that are just naturally skinny. Um, There are bodies that Mm -hmm. are naturally bigger. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, to take the weight out of it, I think is, is really important because what it all comes down to is exerting some sort of power and control over something where power and control in trauma, it's been taken away. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that makes um, a lot of sense. And that's that's a really big question, actually, because I think, yeah, like, you know, I think there was a survey not too long ago where people, a bunch of women were asked um, if they were confident about their bodies and over 90% said that they weren't, Um, which is a really staggering and sad number. Um, And I honestly, growing up to every time I'd walk by like a grocery store or something and I'd see like these racks of like polished magazines, like where people are just like, it's like, hey, lose 10 pounds in two weeks or get the perfect summer bod or, you know, like revenge body, whatever that's supposed to mean, like you're supposed to look a certain way after you break up, which I think is such a ridiculous concept. Um, but I see like all of these like over glamorized Photoshop images and telling girls and boys to look a certain way. And I just like, I, w- I wanted to burn them all. <laughs> and it's like, if I could like just cyanide this entire rack right now, I would because it's so toxic and damaging. You know, this all comes together in ways that I think have impacted us all in very different ways. But I'm curious as to what got you started in being such an advocate for mental health and body image issues and eating disorders? Um, I think this just like ties in with talking about mental health in general. I have had mental health struggles my entire life. Um, I was diagnosed seven years ago, which is the first time I got therapy with a range of different disorders like depression and anxiety and PTSD, and then eventually an eating disorder. Um, And I think I felt very alone in my experiences because we don't really talk about these things. They're very stigmatized and it's kind of seen as shameful or, you know, again, the media really plays into these things with movies like Split, um, where you're really being shown as a monster. Um, And it's a really terrible portrayal of mental illness. And then, yeah, like even in schools, like it's, they say that you're supposed to reach out and talk about these things. But at the same time, if you are different, or if you're showing mental illness symptoms, um, you're very much ostracized and left by yourself and bullied and that does not help. So I felt very alone growing up with my experiences. So Haya, we're talking about relationships. We're talking about how to navigate that. Do you have any strategies for if you're struggling with an eating disorder, how do you navigate that in your relationship? What are your top tips? Um, first of all, I think it's it's important to be really honest with your partner about these struggles. 
a lot of times, again, people will hide these things out of shame or stigma or just guilt. Um, and then the, they may be practicing these behaviors privately, which I think is detrimental because if you do um, wish to recover, I think it's important to be honest with yourself and with those closest to you. So um, first of all, just be open with your partner. Um, explain to them maybe the origins of the eating disorder if you are insightful enough to understand why you're struggling with these issues. Um, so they can better understand why you're practicing these behaviors, which don't maybe make sense to people who don't struggle. Um, so honesty is key. And then I guess um, this kind of goes for mental health struggles in general. Reassurances are very helpful. There's a lot of times when our brains beat, our, beat us up about the way we're feeling and for being the way we are. And sometimes you just need to hear things like, hey, I got you, babe. I love you. Um, you're not a bad person. You're not less of a partner because you have these struggles and they do not define you. Um, you'll get through them.